The other day, uh, I was watching this video on building a home lab by uh, this Hardware Haven. It's got some great videos out there. This one, I just want to comment on this section for a little bit. Um, I kind of scratched my head a little bit at some of the decisions that he made, so we're going to watch a little bit of it and I'll kind of make some comments on it. As a full-size rack. Now maybe at some point I would go with a nice. small rack similar to what I have in my home lab currently just for like networking and stuff. Like but honestly, even something like that might be a little okay. bit overkill for... Number one, let's stop right here. Okay, so you see right here he has a switch uh, and in this top left corner we see the name TP-Link. Now, I... <sighs> It's not that big of a deal. It's just a POA switch. So it's not going to have a whole lot of computational access to your data. But let's just be real here. TP Link is a company that is being investigated right now by the US federal government uh, for its allegiances or lack thereof, or maybe some allegiances to the Chinese government. So just throwing that warning out there if you're really thinking about a TP Link, uh, just know that they are under investigation of the federal government. Not saying anything. So just allegedly, it may be sup suspected that they could be spying devices. We don't really know. It's allegedly the federal government is investigating. Something like my needs. This is the new Dell yeah, AI PC right with Intel inside. Of do this. It helps save you time. Now, speaking right. of networking, let's go. talk about that. Currently for my router, I'm running this goofy box I made a while back. It runs Proxmox with a virtualized instance of PFSense as well as a few other network related services. And it works great. And there's a really good chance I would want to stick with OpenSense or PFSense or something like that. And if I did, I would be tempted to look around for some of those little mini fanless. Um, yeah, I would say definitely go with a fanless because uh, you're just gonna have to worry about about noise overheating that potential type thing and fanless usually works pretty well just as long as you don't like keep it near like 100 degree car or something like that um what i usually do is, or what i would suggest is don't just buy some random thing for pf sense go ahead and get one that's supported um that way you just kind of get a lot more of uh consistency your router is very important especially if you're building a home lab <clears throat> it i don't know if that's something i would uh kind of cheap out on to just kind of buy a random device and then put pf sense on it um, I, my router is a NetGate uh, 4200, a uh, pretty beefy little box, uh, fanless, uh, has four ports on it that just kind of scream uh, with speed. So I would probably suggest getting one of that rather, rather than what he does here. It's PCs that you can get on like AliExpress and such. I like the idea of something that's fanless since it would be on all the time and I just kind of wouldn't have to worry about it ever getting dusty or anything. But one of the problems with running your own router using OpenSense or PFSense or whatever is that once you move away from using the router that your ISP provides, you don't have a built-in access point. So you not only have to buy the hardware for your router, but you also have to buy an access point or two. I would say right off the bat, this is always worth it. Always do it. I just, just get a wired router. They're, they're two separate things. There really are two different set of devices. Now, I get it as to why companies have built router, wireless routers, and because and, it's one device a person buys, puts in their home, get the setup. I get it. Networking's complicated for the average person, very much so. <clears throat> However, if you are starting a home lab, first things first, it should be a must that you are going to have your router as a separate device and your wireless access as a completely separate device. Just, just do it. Just, just do it. And then you have to make sure you have like a PoE switch that can power that access point. And so it starts to add up a bit and re Okay, you don't always, there's certain ways you get Certain access points have their own power supply. So it's not, you don't necessarily have to get a PoE switch. I like, I have a PoE switch as a dumb switch. Uh, I use it for phones, but uh, I don't know. I mean, it's cool. I mean, get a PoE switch if you want to, but know that you need it. Really, there's not anything terribly wrong with using the router that your ISP provides, assuming you at least have the ability to adjust some settings, which I do. So there's a really good chance that I would just start off sort of how I did, just using the router that my ISP provides. And then maybe down the road, I would buy something to run PFSense or OpenSense. But there's actually a chance I would do something differently. It's actually possible I might pick up a router like this one here from Dynalink and don't freak out or anything. I wouldn't actually use the software that's on this, but it is possible with certain routers like this one to flash something like OpenWRT on it to where. Okay. Um, here's the thing. Most people at some point in time, and I'm just assuming you've probably before your days of building a home lab decided, Hey, I'm just going to go to the store, get one of those like night net gear, uh, night Hawks, 
uh, and that'll be my wireless router for a while. If you still got that, just use that. Uh, just uh, flash it with what, like he's saying, uh, open WRT. I use DDWRT. I don't necessarily know which one's better, but I use DDWRT. Uh, I flashed a, a Netgear a Nighthawk. Um, I put it into AP mode. I, you know, so I didn't, again, it's, it works, you know, it, and it's, you know, not using any answer. I turned off all the router functionalities. It's just acting as an AP. I feel like I get more processing on it and I don't, yeah, again, like I'm not really sure why he went out and bought this. I just really think that most people probably have, uh, some sort of wireless router. They still got around their house. Uh, some of them, even with the base firmware, you can put them right into AP mode. So just saying. You can take advantage of this little compact router that has a built-in Wi-Fi 6E access point, I believe, as well as essentially a built-in switch. So pretty cheap. I think this thing's like 60 bucks. And then running... Again, you've got to have a, a Nighthawk just sitting in your house, right? Just for free. Just f flash that f firmware, get that thing up and running. You don't need to go buy a $60 device like this. If so, I mean, that is pretty cheap, I guess, for getting an access point. Um, I still just think if you're already doing that range, just go get an actual wireless access point. I think uh, Ubiquiti is selling their like a seven new seven series light for a hundred bucks. Uh, throw on a little, you know, PoE adapter on there. It's another 20 bucks or so. So yeah, okay, you're, you're getting up, but it just, just buy a device like that. I don't know. It's just my opinion something like OpenWRT, you have the ability to configure settings to your heart's content and even install things like WireGuard or I think you can run like AdGuard Home. So you could run some network services essentially on your router, only spend like 60 bucks and have a built-in. Again, I would try and do most of that from your router, uh, the router itself. Um, treat your devices, even if you're buying a device like this for real cheap, just make it as dumb as possible. Just access point services that's it um you know get in there to basically change up what channel you want your 2.4 gigahertz radio at your 5 gigahertz radio the name of your ssid uh you know what your key is going to be that's it leave it alone just let it sit there wireless access point i'm actually going to be doing a video on this specific guy here trying to flash open wrt to it so that should be fun. Maybe stay tuned for that. But I think there's actually a decent chance I might go for something like this just to save some money, save some space, and because it seems like it'd be kind of fun to do. So that would be the router, but what about switches? Well, currently I have a 10 gig switch, and then I have a couple other switches down here under my desk for two and a half gig and a little bit of 10 gig. And mostly the reason I use 10 gig is because I edit videos off of my NAS. And realistically, if I wasn't doing that, I don't think I would need 10 gig. So I would probably be happy with honestly one gig for a lot of things and then maybe just getting like i honestly can't think of anything else outside of video movement like he's talking about that you'd need 10 gig for i mean if you if you're running like a massive website maybe uh but yeah that i, I don't know how else to even max out a 10 gig connection unless i was moving video files around uh that's about all i can think of a two and a half gig switch to connect like my, my computer to my NAS and maybe my wife's computer to my NAS and then any other devices I might pick up and decide to put in my little home lab closet. All right, I don't have the exact prices with me, but I think at this point we've spent a little bit of money on our desktop PC and the hard drives to go in it. We have a battery backup. We may have bought a router or maybe just used the one provided from my internet service provider. And then I probably picked up a little two and a half gig switch. And so I think at this point without really yeah, uh, he's about to wrap up the networking section here, which is mostly what I'm going to talk about, just with that being my realm of expertise. Um, router, switch, you know, I get it. Uh, like I said, you probably would still be able to get that wireless access point for, you know, just sitting around your closet. Uh, the switch, um, yeah, I, I guess that's a, a pretty decent amount of price. The router, um, I assume he's talking about the actual fanless box that he bought. But uh, again, if you depending on how much you want to expand out your home lab maybe just go ahead and look at something beefy that comes with pfsense kind of supported on it netgate um, i think they are actually contributors main contributors to the pfsense project so you're going to have some pretty good reliability with that um, that's one of those things i just wouldn't really cheap out on is the router go beefy with it do not get anything with the wireless capability get your own access point for that hunting for any deals or anything, just sort of grabbing some quick numbers off of eBay and Amazon and such. I have a pretty solid home lab that can do everything I need it to do for... 
But yeah, he's about to go into other sections. So I would say uh, overall, pretty good way of looking at networking from a home lab perspective. Uh, I'd make a f you know a few adjustments here and there, as I mentioned. Um, and and this is just me. And I go into this in another video. Uh, I'd go on to eBay. I would buy a uh, smart switch. Um, uh, we use smart for so many different terminology, but back. And the day is a smart switch actually meant that it would be something that you could configure VLANs on um, and actually be able to kind of console in with uh, kind of switch port up, switch port down. Uh, I would do that because you get so much more of being able to VLAN off things. So when he is making this world and you're going to maybe want to make websites, you want those separated off using the capabilities of your router, pushing down the VLANs to a switch to where then you could plug in a Raspberry Pi for this subnet and, and, and so forth and just keeping them and a bit more of a component world. So uh, I'll do another video on that sometime. Other than that, thanks for watching.